Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and today I want to show you one of the coolest new features in Adobe After Effects. It's the 3D camera tracker, and it opens up all sorts of cool options, from replacing things within a scene to completely relighting it. Let's take a look at how to use the feature. I've got a shot here, and what I'm going to do is just walk you through it real quick. You see that we've got a pretty bumpy shot. It's handheld. It's walking through a scene, shot on DSLR. There's nothing about this shot except it looks realistic with all the bumps and moves. And I want to show you just how good this tracker is. So with the shot selected and the window open, I'm going to go under the window menu here and bring up the tracker. I can now click track camera. Now we're not tracking an object moving in the scene, rather we're tracking the movement of the camera through the scene. So that's the difference here between track motion and track camera. Let's go back to the composition panel here real quick. And you see that it's actually running and it's doing a background analysis very much like you're used to seeing with things like the warp stabilizer. In fact, these two technologies share some of the methodology to them in that it analyzes the footage and then essentially performs some magic. Now over here on the right, I want to explain a couple of the settings as this is processing. First off, this analysis only has to be done once for a scene. Once it's done, it's stored with the clip, and it makes it very easy as you continue to tweak it in a project. Under Shot Type, you have the ability to do a fixed angle of view. If you have the camera locked down, at least the zoom level, it could be moving or dollying or tracking or handheld, but that's the fixed angle. If you're zooming the camera, then you're going to want to choose the variable zoom option for it to analyze that. Additionally, if you know the angle of view using an angle of view calculator, not just the camera lens, this can go ahead and tell you with greater accuracy what's happening. Next, we have the ability to show our tracking points, and we can look at them in 2D or 3D solved. The 3D solved will vary in size, making it easier to understand points that are closer or further away. Beyond this, we just have the ability to adjust the size as well as the target, and we can start to attach things to the tracker. What's essentially different about this tracker is that it tracks in 3D space and creates a tracking cloud. What this means is, is even if a point moves off the screen, the tracking data can be handed off to other points. So for example, notice how my hands move behind the screen and come back? Well, it could still follow them even when they're essentially out of the camera's view. And that's really cool because the computer does a lot of math. Now this is very complex and requires a fast machine, especially a GPU. This is one of those effects that is going to draw a lot of benefit here. Let's take a look at what's happening. Home stretch, as soon as this is done, we will be able to see all sorts of tracking points on our footage. I'll select the effect. There we go. And it's solving it based on the type of camera. I told it that this was a fixed angle of view, that the camera wasn't zooming. And you see all those points. Now, if you want to get rid of a point, you can go ahead and right-click on one and actually get rid of it, and that'll remove it from the scene. But you see, it's pretty straightforward. And what I'm looking for is enough points to create a tracking point. That looks pretty good. I want to go ahead and assign something to the ground here, like a piece of graffiti. So when I click, you see it generates that. Now, I can go ahead and hold down the Shift key if I want and add additional points there to improve that. And you see, as you start to select points, it's going to adjust. It gives you a pretty good idea of what you have. I'll click on the circle to select it. And holding down the control key, I can move that around to reposition it within the frame. Add the alt key, and you see the ability to make the target bigger. So that's control to move, and alt to adjust. On a Mac, that would be Command and Option. All right, I've got that. I'm going to right click and tell it to create, in this case, a new solid. There it is. That's tracked to the layer itself. And if I move through, you see that it responds to the camera movement. That looks pretty cool. We'll just move that forward a little bit. And let's drag. Looks great. And what I'm going to do is replace that with a logo. So let's just select that, and I'll hold down the Alt or Option key and do a drag replace. There it is. S for scale, R for rotation. Let's just scale that up. 
I'll adjust its rotation as needed. Looks pretty good there. Let's set that to a blending mode like overlay so it looks like it's painted on the sidewalk. And I'll lower the opacity down a little bit to about 85%. And we'll do a quick RAM preview. And you'll see that what we've done is successfully mapped that to the surface of the scene. So even now as the camera moves through and it's handheld, you see that it reacts and goes out of the shot in the natural position. Here it is. That's really cool. This allows you to do all sorts of things, like attach things to a scene. And in a later tutorial, I'll show you this working with some 3D text. I think this is just an amazing tracker, and it's built right into After Effects, which makes it super easy to use. That's the new 3D camera tracker inside of After Effects, tremendously useful. And remember, if you're in Premiere Pro, it's as simple as right-click, replace with After Effects composition to send that clip on over so you can easily update it. Thanks again for joining us. My name's Rich Harrington.